Yeah. I, I want to bounce back uh, just before I forget. Two questions on the, the insulin piece with mm-hmm. uh, sort of suppressing lipolysis. Is it a dimmer switch more so than a light switch? And if it is a dimmer switch, does it, as you start to crank it up or down, mm-hmm. does it gain more momentum as you're cranking it up to 11? You know, like, so yeah. if, you're, if you have an insulin release and its ability to allow fat into a young or a new fat or a small fat cell, when you have a little bit of insulin, is there a little bit of momentum and does it increase, does it kind of gain momentum with more? Yeah, that's a good question. So to answer the first part of the question very definitively, it is absolutely a dimmer. Yeah. There's, it is completely a function of degrees. And you can titrate this beautifully in, in it, like living, breathing humans. You can monitor this over time where the product of lipolysis, so when we're talking about breaking down the fat from the fat cell, the stored form of the fat in the fat cell is triglycerides. The product of the lipolysis is free fatty acids, sometimes referred to as non-esterified fatty acids, but free fatty acids. And you can get this measured on a blood test, albeit it's not uncommonly. However, my point about the kind of titrating or the changing the dose, if insulin skyrockets, give that body a few minutes, and if you're measuring free fatty acids, the free fatty acids plummet and go to almost undetectable very, very quickly. In contrast, the more you give the body time to allow the insulin to come down, and the fastest way to do that, of course, is fasting. So if a fast starts from this point of really high insulin and essentially no lipolysis, so free fatty acids, basically baseline, and then the more time you're giving them, you can see this beautiful crossover. And Dr. George Cahill, a legend in the field of fasting or what he called starvation research, we would call it fasting, he really has published some beautiful papers that show these kinds of figures where when insulin would start to get to around 10 microunits per mil, you could immediately start to see this, this reduction. So the insulin's coming up, you'd start to see this reduction in the free fatty acids. But then back to the paradigm I'd outlined a moment ago, if you take a fed individual and start fasting them, as insulin starts coming down, you can see this steady, steady decline hour after hour of the free fatty acids coming up. But that's right there, if you'll allow me, Thomas, there's an interesting test that someone can do at home. So I've presented the viewpoint that the first cell or tissue that becomes insulin resistant is the fat cell. And I defend that vigorously. Um, Because of this, you can actually combine the two variables that I just mentioned into what I consider to be one of the best tests for detecting insulin resistance at the earliest possible stage. In other words, the moment it's starting at the fat cells. So as we go back to that hypertrophic fat cell, as it starts to become insulin resistant, insulin levels are high. There's no such thing as insulin resistance without elevated insulin. You cannot pull those two apart. If it's insulin resistance, insulin levels are high. Well, with what I just mentioned, if insulin levels are high, we would expect free fatty acids to be low unless the fat cells have become hypertrophic and now they're insulin resistant. Now we have this metabolic oddity where both insulin is elevated and free fatty acids are elevated. This is a particularly pathogenic state because while the fat cells are full and they can't handle anymore, if insulin is up, you can't burn that fat. Normally, you only have high free fatty acids when insulin is low, and because insulin is is low, you can now burn it. Beta oxidation or the burning of the fat is just going like gangbusters, so much so that you're burning more than you need and you start making ketones, which is a different topic. But if you have both high insulin and high free fatty acids, now you start storing those free fatty acids in tissues that are ill-suited for long-term fat, long-term fat storage. This is this idea of ectopic fat deposition, where now you're storing fat in your muscles, in your pancreas, in your liver. So you have all of these fatty deposits in tissues that are not designed to store fat, but it's because when you have high insulin and high free fatty acids, you can't burn that fat. You have to store it. It's just you can't store it in the fat tissue anymore. 